Hello. As our children find new ways to communicate with each other from the internet, they have unfortunately also found new ways to hurt each other through the internet. Just the same way uh, kick a bad word in the playground can hurt a child, a simple click on the internet can also harm a child. So today we are going to be talking about cyberbullying. My name is Mariana Munyendo and you are watching Simba Safe Kenya. What is cyberbullying? Cyberbullying is the use of technological gadgets, maybe a phone, the internet, a computer, a tablet, to send information, maybe messages, images, and stories about someone that can harass them or humiliate them or embarrass them. Our children are also doing that right now. What are some of the things that drive them to do this? Maybe because the fact that on the web, there is anonymity, so I can be able to do it without someone knowing. And then there's a lot of peer pressure around it. Why can't you tell someone so and so? So you find a child that is not normally very outspoken in general, may hide behind the anonymous veil of the internet and send something very nasty to another child just to prove a point to their peer circle of influence. A child's self-confidence is easily hurt when such information is shared about them. And sometimes some of this uh, damage can end up being permanent emotional damage and can have a child really reacting to life situations very differently because of the impact of one person's hurtful word. Secondly, the internet never forgets. It's not easy to erase some of this information about a child that is harmful or embarrassing and so it keeps on being a constant reminder to this child of a bad experience that they once had. So today the main agenda is to talk to us parents about understanding what cyberbullying is. This is something that is cropping up within the circles of influence of our children because they now have technology. So it's also important for us to be able to clarify and understand how cyberbullying works and how we can be able to help our children be responsible and friendly people on the internet. So what we're going to do is to talk about the differences between cyberbullying versus the traditional form of bullying. This will help us get a bigger scope on how we can be able to control this or cut out this habit when it creeps up among our children. The number one difference between cyberbullying and traditional bullying is the proximity and the length. Traditional bullying may take place face to face. So the contact between the victim and the aggressor can be limited. But for cyberbullying, the virtual space is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So there's no limit to the continuous contact of the victim and the aggressor. The second thing is, in traditional bullying, the victim can find an alternative place to hide. Let's say, for example, if it's in the school bus and someone is disturbing you, you can always move chairs and go sit at the back or at the front of the school bus. That way no one will disturb you. Or you can always run away from the playground. But for cyberbullying, there's no running away from the cyberspace. This technology enables someone to quickly find the victim on the different virtual spaces that they are on. And so there's no escaping from it. The third thing about bullying is the traditional form of bullying. It is limited to onlookers. Let's say, for example, children are in a classroom or in the playground or just within a social space. The number of people around the bullying activity are limited because they're the ones who are exposed to it. But on cyberbullying, the number of people exposed to it is limitless. A post can go viral in a matter of seconds and so it just goes global so it's just scary finally another difference between traditional bullying and cyber bullying is identification in traditional bullying a bully can be easily identified because there are witnesses or and they can be able to quickly identify it is so and so who said so it's so and so who pushed her it's so and so who said them started the nasty rumor but with cyber bullying the the world wide web accords people anonymity so someone can be able to set up a pseudo account a fake account and just share horrible information about a child and it's not very easy to track them and even with now with the fact that some of the devices or some of the applications we used to share such information can now self-destruct 
it's very hard also to trace some of these messages. So the anonymity factor prevails because you cannot easily identify who the bully is. In our previous video, we talked about model internet behavior for adults because we understand that it's very important how we behave on the internet will affect our children's behavior on the internet. So to adults bully, some of the adults are cyber bullies. For instance, the biggest and most recent incidents that happened was in February of this year. And uh, there was a gentleman who was dancing somewhere and he was a plus size gentleman and someone took a, a picture of him and posted it on Twitter and said, I saw this species dancing. Very unfortunate, no one should be able to make you feel bad about being open and enjoying life in an open space. But the citizens of the internet came through in a very big way and ended up giving this man the experience of his life. Read more about the story on hashtag find dancing man and we also have the link on our Facebook page. Remember, model internet behavior is very important for our children. We need to bring them up so that they can be able to use the internet well. My name is Mariana Muniendo and this is Simba Safe Kenya. Remember, safety is as simple as A, B, C. Always be careful.